Breezy Mead Gardens is one of the largest gardens in the north of England, with 7,000 different plants growing within its 25 acres of land. Colin and Mary Lynn Parker spent years turning this old potato farm into a plethora of garden rooms that change with the seasons, making it one of the highest rated gardens on TripAdvisor in the UK. I spoke with Colin to find out more about the gardens here. This was started between myself and my wife Mary Lynn. We bought this land 25 years ago. When we bought it, it was, well, when we stood here, every single plant that you see on that shot, we have put in in the last 25 years. So this was basically a field of potatoes. So we spent the first seven, eight years just putting in trees, hedges, shrubs to give a, a structure and also to give us some much needed shelter. Each year we've been adding new features to the point now where we're up to 25 acres. Put that into context, that's about 20 football pitches. And so we're one of the three largest gardens in Yorkshire. This is the period really when the main borders are really sort of coming out. They are at the thickest uh, and the, this peak for the main borders will be through until early mid-August. This is what we call the lawn garden. So the lawn garden is literally three lawns with the borders around. This is one of the areas that I would call the, the, the heart of the garden, some of the main borders that we've got. So these are designed to be of interest throughout the year. To me, personally, there are no two colours of flowers that do not go together. So if you see walking around here, you say, oh, that's a lovely combination. You know, how well they did get in that. No, it is essentially, as far as I'm concerned, as I said, there are no two colours that don't go together. So what we do is we try to spread the, the, the plants out, not put everything that flowers at the same time together. Essentially, the layout of the garden, we've got it in three distinct types. So we've got the main borders, such as this, this is what we call one of the main borders, where we've got plants which are designed to be in season or in flower all the way through from early May until into September and even into October. So we've got areas like that, which are the raised beds, the cottage garden, the peonies daylily garden. So this is the, what we call the peony and the daylily garden. Even now there's still an odd peony that is hanging on. Most of the peonies are over. And then we succeed them in terms of flowering with the, the daylily. So there's a lot of hemerocallis in here. But we intersperse it with, you know, we've got geraniums and various other plants in here. But the core of it is, you know, those, those two major groups. The rock garden is, it's not a, a such a rockery, but we've got relatively low growing things. And there's quite a lot of geranium sanguinium, which is lovely. And it's it just, I would call it the rock garden because it is, you can't see so many rocks actually at the minute, but it's strewn with rocks. Again, it's flat. Normally you think alpine plants, you know, be on a slope and everything, but this is flat. So that makes it different as well, particularly on a lovely sunny day like this. I'm, I'm really chuffed. There's a lot of, a lot of flower in this. Then we've got certain uh, seasonal gardens, far more seasonal gardens. So we've got the May garden, we've got the June garden, and we've got the September garden. And they're exactly what they say. They're designed to be at a peak those particular months. So this is the, the June garden, this February, so February 2024. It was underwater down here for eight weeks. And these plants are ones that are not generally supposed to like flooding. But if you come down now, with, again, with the end of June, it does give a great deal of satisfaction that having had a situation like that of flooding for so long, there is still so much out. Delenias, lupins, allium, Christophei there. We've got a, a butterfly in the middle. And again, you know, we've got box and we've got Berberis. They were underwater for eight weeks and they've still survived it. You look in the, the textbooks, or online now, and I don't think they'll say they'll stand that amount of water, they like free draining soil, but they're still here. The third sort of type of areas that we've got are almost seasonless areas. So we've got things like the fountains, the lake, some of the sculptures, the wellies and the, uh, the, the giant trowel, these sort of areas which are designed not really to change through the year or to, or to change very little. This is the, uh, what we call the conifer garden because that's what it's full of. It's full of, uh, full of conifers. The main reason I like it is because I actually call it an antidote to the rest of the garden in that we've got no 
flowers. There's not a single flower in here. So we've got these big conifers and some which are going to get very big and then we've planted dwarf ones. I've got two of my favourite trees here. This one which is a, a weeping deodar cedar. It just spreads outwards but it doesn't really grow upwards and it's got these absolutely beautiful pendulous branches and it just keeps, it's just growing out amongst all the other trees. This is a golden deodar cedar here, just we've set it against the backdrop of uh, bog standard Leylandii and I just love the, the graceful nature of that. So those two are, are two of the uh, favourite trees that I've got. The, the thing that I'm most chuffed about, the thing that gives me the most satisfaction is the fact that we've started off from absolutely nothing, from a literally a field of potatoes because that's exactly what it was when we bought the land and we've turned that into one of the few gardens in the entire country that is uh, five star rated on TripAdvisor. I hope we keep up with that, I hope people like it. I mean we like it but it's nice that other people who are coming like it as well and I think that gives a, to me, it gives a great deal of satisfaction does that. I like people to go away and feel that they've enjoyed it, it was worth doing it and they go away and they recommend it to other people and I really can't ask for more than that. To find out more about Breezy Knees Gardens head over to the link in the description and make sure to like this video and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching!